The Goon Hilly Earth Station is a fantastic opportunity to see scientists working in a real life context. It's the centre of a huge communications network and they're responsible for um, many of the, the telephone calls, the, the television programmes um, and intercontinental links um, in the whole world. Well, Goon Hilly Satellite Station is the oldest and largest Earth station in the world. Um, for secondary schools, we cover four areas, literacy, um, art and design, um, ICT we do a lot on, and also history, um, a world case study after 1900. The plan is um, that we're going on a, a bus tour uh, with a guide um, who will explain exactly you know, what's going on, a little bit of history of the place. Goon Hilly is situated within a site of special scientific interest, and it's a nature reserve that's managed by English Nature. It's covered in forest and forest there are many, many links with local industry that are possible that help to increase the awareness of the possibility of scientific jobs for the future. We saw a film and it showed us um, what happens in a television centre. They have some free time, they're going into the visitor centre, There's some interactive stuff that they can work on. Um, I think they can do things with Morse code and they can make 3D images and they can send messages out to space and a whole variety of things. So what are they supposed to be then? What are they supposed to represent? Uh, they're supposed to represent satellites going around the Earth. And the closer they get to the Earth, the faster they go. It's a video conferencing unit. <laughs> Hello! I'm going to go that side now. Let me see what they're doing. Okay. Sending a message to outer space. I'd like to know what it's like in space and do you have to go to school? It's extending the knowledge of the teacher as well and bringing the teacher up to date. And I have to say that I've learnt alongside experts along the way many, many times. I don't know how all this stuff works myself. I have an idea of some of it, but you know, you know I'm not an expert. Um, so in many cases, it's a question of, well, you know, remember that question. We'll try and find out when we get back to school. Well, in the classroom, you can only see, like, pictures and videos and stuff. What it's like when you come here, it's completely different. It's a lot better to learn that here. And it's more interesting as well, sitting in a classroom. Right? You can't really fit um, a big satellite dish in the classroom, so it's more interesting to sort of go and see them. Learning about um, all the things that go on in the world that when you're at home, you don't really know about. And it's a whole network and new stuff to explore and everything. It's been great watching the kids enjoy themselves. Um, it's a different sort of relationship you form when it's, when it's like this. And uh, when we're back in the lab, um, we'll have lots to talk about. This is a trip to the National Space Centre at Leicester. An absolutely superb day's outing for these students. They lose themselves from the minute they get into this building. We wanted to take a trip for Science Week and we decided that the Space Centre was appropriate for what we teach in Year 7, especially since we're doing the Solar System and Beyond topic. It puts into context the science that we do in school. The students are going to go and investigate a comet in more detail, essentially to give us a better picture of what comets are really like. The space station is going to be in orbit at a height of about 400 kilometres, and we do actually have to dock with it, so it will take us a couple of minutes to get there, but it shouldn't be too long. T-minus 10, 9, we have a go for main engine start, 4, Three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Roger, roll. Roll program initiated. Use the mount controlling. Confirm. We have SRV step over. Roger, copy. Loud clear. The journey into space would only take a matter of minutes. However, the process of going into orbit and going around the Earth to then dock with the space station would take anywhere up to two days. To be able to totally immerse the children in this sort of learning experience is just out of this world. Medical team, 
That's what MED stands for. You're going to be making sure we're all fit and healthy. Test yourselves first, and then you can start on other members of the crew. Space Station, this is Mission Control. I have a message for the MED team. Over. Communication skills are extremely important. Not only do you have two groups separated effectively by the void of space, they only have really two main lines of communication. A communications officer who does verbal communications and a data officer that does written communications. Meg team, can someone come over here please? Hello. Mission Control, this is the space station. We are ready to receive. Over. It means that they have to think very carefully about the message that they're trying to get across. They have to present it properly. It has to be short, concise, clear and written properly so they can actually have it read by somebody else. We are ready to begin recording your results. The experiments are mainly geological and biological. In the glove box are some space rock samples and the remote officer has to perform basic experiments to determine their composition. Back at Mission Control, their counterpart will analyse the data and find out what the rocks are. The meteorite one is grey in colour. The tasks that they do on there are things that they might actually do in class, but they were put into a real life context for them to give the science some meaning. Did you hear that, Meg? For the Mission Controllers, their job may seem less exciting, but if you have a bright group of kids and they are working effectively with the material that they've got, it can get very tense and very exciting. If the mission controllers aren't doing their job properly, then theoretically the lives on board the space station could be in danger. But if you're working with a capable group, then there are all sorts of other things that we can throw in to keep them on their toes and to test their metal, as it were. It says there's an oxygen emergency kicking off. We're losing oxygen rapidly. Now, this is going to be an issue for the LS team to sort out. Mission Control, this is the space station. The message for the LS team is we are losing oxygen. How is to solve this problem? Over. Oh, good, good, good. Five seconds left. Yes, excellent. Come on out. Yeah, well done, well done. Now, now at 195 knots, then touch down on those gear. Okay, control. The reaction can really be quite bizarre. Many of them will actually ask, is this for real? And they can be very, very sucked in by the whole situation. So it normally gets a very, very good reaction. They seem to have found a new confidence in themselves. So they were talking as if they had actually been to space and they had actually run a mission control. This trip is to the Field Studies Centre at Dale Fort. It's a residential course and even though it might seem daunting to some members of staff, with careful preparation and the right frame of mind and the right rapport with the students, it is a truly memorable and valuable experience. People back at school think we get a holiday for the week. Um, we don't. The children work very, very hard whilst they're here. OK, this is what we're looking for. A common sand hopper, a litherous saltator. OK, little things that jump around. They live in the patches of seaweed under the pebbles um, along the beach. The best thing to do, find yourself a little patch of seaweed spread out a little bit. And if you kick over the seaweed and the pebbles underneath, You'll see hundreds of them. I've got one. Let's start. I don't like this. This is making me cringe. I'm too scared. I don't like this. All the shrieks and the squeals of, of oh, what is it? Or, oh my goodness, um, you know, does it bite? Does it sting? Is wonderful to see. Very few of them have actually stuck their nose in a rock pool. Um, and even if they have, they, they very rarely actually put their hands into it and got stuck in. So one of the great things is the completely new environments that they're not used to. You need about 50 in your pot. It's quite important and enlightening to realise that even Year 12 students may well not have been away from home before. Paint on the back of the sandhopper, OK? Um, and then you need to drop them back into the seaweed where you caught them from and you need to count how many you're painting. Oh, I've got it on its back. <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> no, 
up with your pants. Don't be silly. No, they actually might be easier. Oh! <laughs> well, why do we paint it if we got? Because we're going to come back later. Look for that one again. You're going to collect another 50. And you're going to find out how many have got that yellow dot on. It's even more important on a residential trip to have clear aims and objectives so that the outcomes can be achieved. It's also vitally important to give some downtime to each member of staff in turn and to the students. I think they expect um, a lot of fun, but I think they expect to just go to the beach and catch the odd crab here and there or the, the odd snail here and there. They certainly don't expect the vast array of organisms that are found down here on the seashores. It looks like noodle. The pupils get a huge amount out of it. Some of them have never left home for more than a day or two, so spending eight days away from their family um, is quite a big achievement. It's really nice to see how the social groups mix. Generally, they all pull together. Some of the pupils that you think sit very quietly in the corner in your classroom really come out of themselves when they come to a place like this. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like you to do is put your quadrats together, get your group together, find yourselves a point along the tape, spread out so you've got a bit of room between the groups and sample what you've got present at site number one. Today we are at the Gann Salt Marsh. It's the mouth of the Gann estuary and what we've come to study is the concept of succession, how vegetation changes in the plant and animal communities with time. What we'll hopefully demonstrate is how we've got evidence for every um, stage of succession. So we've got the migration stage um, down at the bare mud at the estuary um, right through to the climax vegetation stage um, at the top of the Pickle Ridge. There. So you notice that the amount of vegetation has changed and also the types of vegetation have changed as well. If you take the cross section of the, of the leaf, it looks like a gutter or a C shape in cross section. So you've got C plantain there as well. Okay, so loads of new species. The reason we come to Dale Fort is because it's such a beautiful place um, and as well as the people here being very caring, very considerate and fantastic at their job. It gives us a great opportunity for the Year 12 students to prepare well for the Year 13 course and their coursework is done here. Running trips, be they day trips or residential trips, are very, very rewarding. There are enormous benefits in taking students outside the classroom to learn about science and everyday life. We can't recreate that in the classroom.